I'm looking for Matt, and I don't know if you're the right Matt, but I need to speak to you right now, please. Okay, we'll go to the email to find some people that are um, seeking advice on various different issues in their life. This is from Isaac, says, Dear Sweet Daddy, the guest preacher at the last worship service my college's ministry holds spoke about the Apostle Paul's message in 1 Corinthians chapter 8 about how a married person's attention is divided between God and their spouse, and so Paul says it is better to remain single. The preacher and his wife of 18 years then encouraged us to enjoy singleness and to not rush to get married too soon. However, I have also read passages about how it's good to get married, and I'm having trouble reconciling these two sentiments. Should I wait to see a wife, wait to seek a wife until I'm older? And how soon a relationship is too soon for marriage, in your opinion? How soon is too soon? You know that that I feel like that question comes up in every uh, every segment we do. But I, I I've I've said you know I think six months for engagement is like there's no exact time frame, and I'm biased because I'm only telling you what happened for me, but um, I think six months is enough time to discern that you want to get engaged, and then you get engaged, and but you don't need to be engaged for five years either. As to what the pastor said, I, you know, I think that it's at the best naive in the extreme, uh, un- unhelpful, you know, in, in this environment. to be talking to young people, so you said that you're, well, you're a college student, right, so you're a young adult, and just have the message be, enjoy, enjoy singleness. I certainly hope there was at least more to it than that. It's not so easy, for, especially from everything that I, that I hear from single people all the time that are looking for someone. It's, you know, to, to just enjoy it and enjoy being alone, especially when, when most of us have this longing to find a, a companion that's very natural and to just say, oh, well, just enjoy. Enjoy being single out in this decaying society of ours. So I think that's at best naive, and it's also a misinterpretation of um, that particular passage of 1 Corinthians. It's a very specific situation, a moment in time. Not not that it has no application outside of that, but he's talking to people in a specific situation um, that I don't think is intended for you to be taken as a a young adult in modern American 2023. Um, I don't think that that verse is the Apostle Paul telling you that it's better if you don't get married. There are some people who are called to that, where you are called to a life of service outside of marriage. But for most people, that's not your vocation. That's not what you're called to. You should discern whether that's the case. But it sounds like for you, you know, you know you want to get married eventually. So that's not the case for you. Also, in that same uh, verse, if I'm not mistaken, I could look it up. But like right after saying that, he, he also mentions that even in that context when, that, in which he was writing, if not getting married is going to lead you into to sin, um, you know, into sexual sin, now you're having sexual relations outside of marriage and that sort of thing, if that's where it's going to lead you to, then it's better to get married. You know, he even says that in that passage. Um, and I don't think that that's the only reason to get married, but it is also true. Trying to be chaste and observe biblical sexual morality as a young single adult in modern America is a very difficult thing. And to just think that that's good, and for a pastor to say, well, do that indefinitely, um, is not very practical. I don't think it's good advice. Man, that's some bad advice. <laughs> so I think already as a, as a young, young adult, you know, you're thinking about marriage and you get into the dating scene with that in mind. And it doesn't mean that the first person you go on a date with, you're going to get married to. It's just that that's the end goal you have in mind. And you are, you know, it's like a, it's a mutual job interview. How are you? I'm fine. Are you fine? Yeah. You're fine then. Where you are seeing if each other are, are the right fit for, for marriage down the line. But it's important to have that end goal in mind, to know, so you're dating with a purpose, you know what this is supposed to be leading to, you know the kind of standard that you're, that you're looking for, and there's no reason why you can't think, start thinking about that right now. You know, it takes a special kind of company to want to partner with my show. I say a lot of things that make a lot of people angry, and this tends to scare off advertisers. That's why I'm so grateful to partners like Pure Talk, who stand behind me and my show, no matter the consequences they might face. Pure Talk shares my values, which is why we've made them the official cell phone wireless partner of The Daily Wire. But that's not the only reason. Pure Talk offers the most dependable 5G network in the U.S., I use it myself, their plans are top tier, but at a fraction of the cost of AT&T, Verizon, or T-Mobile, you get unlimited talk, text, and unlimited data with a a mobile hotspot for just $55 a month. You vote with how you spend your money, so stop supporting woke wireless companies that don't support you. Instead, go to puretalk.com slash Walsh. You'll get great coverage and save while you're at it. When you go to puretalk.com slash Walsh, you'll save an additional 50% off your month because they actually value you. That's puretalk.com slash Walsh, Pure Talk. 
Wireless for Americans by Americans. Rachel says, hi, Matt, I'm in the military, currently stationed overseas, and I'll be getting stationed in Alaska three months from now. I'm in a relationship with a man that I can see myself spending the rest of my life with, but he has sent he was sent to be stationed in the southeastern U.S. a few months ago. Uh, he, we'll st we still talk on the phone nearly every day since he left, and we watch movies and shows together on video chat. We send each other books to read and songs to listen to, all of which I'm beyond grateful for, but I'm so scared that the distance will eventually cause us to drift apart and I'll lose him forever. He's given me no reason to think this way. He always expresses that he misses me and that he loves talking to me, and he's uh, even told me that he doesn't want to lose me either. I'm trying to just enjoy every moment I share with him, but there are times that the fear of losing him is too overwhelming. Do you have any advice of push for pushing past this fear or on keeping a long distance relationship strong over a long period of time? I guess sort of similar advice to what I just gave. I think that uh, I don't know how long you guys were dating before you ended up uh, being sent to different parts of the world. In any dating situation, it's important to have that end goal in mind and for you both to understand that that's what you're working towards is eventually getting engaged and getting married. Um, if either one of you has, has ruled that out as a possibility or you have no interest in even thinking about marriage right now, then that's something that should be communicated to the other because that means that this is a relationship doomed to fail and it's probably better to just cut it off now. Cut it out. Get out of here. Or you can hang on until the heartbreak comes down the line. So that's, that's the case in any dating relationship. But I think especially in a situation like this, where you guys are time zones apart, um, it's important to have that end goal in mind. So I would start, you know, talking about that if you haven't already. And I think that, that gives you your best chance when you, when you both know where this is leading, what you want for the future. It's not like this open-ended. So you're, having an open-ended, ambiguous kind of relationship is potentially fatal to the relationship in any context, but especially when you're not even physically around each other. So that's one thing I would certainly do. All right. Um, we'll leave it there for today. Godspeed.